All right, our next case study is a ton of fun. It's my all-time favorite. For this one, we're actually going to look at shark attack records recorded between 1900 and 2016. So we've got just under 5,300 records or observations in our data set. And what's a little bit unique about this data set is that it actually doesn't contain any measures. So there are no numerical variables or quantitative fields. It's all dimensions. And this is relatively common when it comes to things like record keeping, because what's most relevant is the information contained within those records as opposed to any sort of quantitative field. So we've got a ton of really fascinating dimensions to work with, um, starting with the case number and the date that the attack took place. We can cut the data by the type of attack, whether it was provoked or unprovoked, uh, where it took place in terms of the country, area, and specific location, uh, what activity the victim was engaged in when they were attacked, their name, their gender, their age, uh, what type of injury was sustained, whether it was fatal, yes or no, um, even like the species of the shark and the investigator and where the source came from, all of this is included in these shark attack records that we have on hand. So really, really rich data set to use for all sorts of different types of analyses. In this case, we're going to do a quick kickoff and some of the concepts that we'll cover are date grouping, value settings, and pivot charts. So let's jump in. All right, go ahead and head to the shark attack records tab in our pivot table case study workbook. And here we're just going to control A to grab all that data and insert a pivot on a new worksheet. Let's go ahead and name this shark pivot and format that tab with a nice green fill. And my gosh, where do we even begin with a data set like this? There are so many cool angles that we can take, um, but at the end of the day, broadly what we're trying to understand is the number of records or count of attacks broken down in all sorts of interesting ways. You know, maybe by date, by location, by gender, activity, you know, really a lot of options available to us here. And since my raw data is at the case level, meaning one row per recorded attack, this should be relatively simple to do. Um, so let's drag case number here into our values box. As you can see, it defaults to a count because uh, it really isn't a numerical field or a measure. And in this case, the count is exactly what I want. Right now, it tells me that there are 5,292 records or rows in my data set, which if I jump back to my actual data sheet, I can confirm aligns with the number of rows. So that's exactly what I want. And now it's a function of breaking down this count and slicing and dicing it in different ways. So why don't we start with trending? I'll take a date field, drag it into rows. As you can see, it's auto grouping, which is OK. I'm going to pull quarters and date out just so that I'm looking at the attacks by year. So because the data is a little bit funky um, early on in the beginning of the century, I'd like to actually limit this view to a more modern cut of the data. Um, so what I'll do here is just select the last 12 years or so, so 2005 through 2016, and then just right click, filter, keep only selected items. And there you go, I've got this 12 year kind of running count of shark attacks by year. So 102 attacks in 2005, 103 in 2006. Now what I wanna do is actually just pull in couple more instances of this count of case number field so that we can show these values in different ways. Now the second column, you know, maybe we want to show this as the percent of the column total, which now tells me that, you know, the 139 attacks in 2015 made up the largest share within this 12-year sample, accounting for just over 10% of the recorded attacks. You know, this third example, I could show that as a running total with years as my base field. So I can see how the attack total has grown starting in 2005, adding all the way up to 1,387 total attacks by the year 2016. Um, so just different ways to look at this data um, and understand how the trending has looked over time. So that's interesting enough. Let's pull years out now, but preserve that 12 year view. And now I want to cut the data in a different way. So I think I'll start with gender. I want to see if there are notable differences, female versus male. And you'll see that my third column, which is showing values as a running total, 
is no longer valid since this base field of years no longer exists in my view. So I can go ahead and just pull that out. And I mean, this view is interesting. What it tells me is that uh, it's bad news to be a guy as far as shark attacks are concerned. I wouldn't say that they're being attacked by sharks because they're male. It's more likely because of the activities that they're engaged in. But pretty fascinating, in this 12-year window, 83% of the attacks were on men and just under 17 on women. So kind of a cool nugget there. And then we can go even deeper, pull gender out, and actually look at the attacks by age. Now scrolling through here, one thing I've noticed at the end is that there's an unknown bucket with a ton of observations. These are just attacks or cases uh, where an age wasn't provided or, or wasn't recorded. Um, so I don't want that field. I can go ahead and just deselect unknown so that I'm only looking at known ages. And this is a great candidate for visualization, um, particularly for a histogram style chart, which can really show the frequency of attacks by age and allow us to understand which ages tend to be more frequently involved in shark attacks. So I'll simplify this view a little bit and pull out the percent of column total calculation so that I'm just looking at the count of case number bucketed by age. And now with any of these cells selected, go into my tools, pivot chart, and this clustered column will give us really nice histogram effect. We can go into analyze and get rid of those field buttons here. But take a look at this, really, really clear and powerful visualization that shows me exactly where the highest frequencies of attacks take place in terms of age buckets. So in this case, pretty crystal clear that starting around the age 15 or so, frequency of attacks are much higher, you know, all the way out into about 22 or so, and then it starts to come down and then trail off quite a bit once people reach their 50s and 60s. So again, this doesn't necessarily address the causation, you know, the, the why is this the case, um, but some hypotheses that we might start throwing out there you know, are that younger people are more likely to be engaged in activities where they're simply more likely to be attacked by a shark, like surfing or bodyboarding or swimming or whatever it may be. Uh, but that's a really interesting view here. And if we wanted to keep this, you know, one option would be to just copy this pivot and create a new version uh, elsewhere in the sheet or on a different sheet. In this case, I'm actually just going to drop this chart and continue to explore this data. Um, so let's delete that. And now, rather than age, I'm kind of interested in this activity field. I want to see what's, what people were doing when they were attacked, and kind of what activities led to the most attacks in this sample. So I'm going to pull activity as my row labels. I'm going to sort these descending by the count of case number. So. Nothing really surprising here. It's kind of what you'd expect. A lot of attacks happened while people were surfing or swimming or spear fishing. Um, if we wanted to drill in one layer deeper, we could also pull in this fatal yes no field, which is a binary filter. It takes a value of no if the attack was not fatal, uh, yes if it was. So we can see if there are any differences between, you know, fatal attacks typically occurring when people are swimming or surfing you know, versus non-fatal. Kind of the same story here, nothing really uh, too groundbreaking there, but just you know, different ways to slice and dice this data using the dimensions at hand. Now, one last thing to call out here is that if we unfilter the year column, you'll notice that this column A gets stretched way, way out, and it becomes really annoying to work with. Um, so to fix that, you can right click change the column width back to 20 or so um, so that it's back in view. Now the reason it's doing this is because there are certain activities here uh, that have very, very long strings and Excel is trying to auto fit the column width so that none of those strings are being cut off. But the problem is that anytime you make any adjustment to your pivot, it's going to auto fit again and again and again and you have to keep changing the column width over and over. Um, so to fix that, I'll just hop into Pivot Table Tools, Options, and just deselect Auto Fit Column Widths on Update. Press OK. And now when you make any adjustments to your pivot, this column A will remain the same width as it currently is and not stretch out every time you make a change. So with that, I'd highly recommend that you explore this data a little bit deeper on your own. 
There are some pretty incredible records here. I've really just begun to scratch the surface of this data set. Um, my personal favorite so far, if I pull activity out and drop in name, is uh, a man by the name of Cosimo Piccini, who is kind of an interesting case because judging by the activity recorded, he actually attacked a shark with his fists. Um, but don't worry, he somehow escaped with just a lacerated arm. Um, on that note, that's your intro to our shark attack case study.